Welcome to this targeted oncology presentation titled Targeting PD-1 in Non-Melanoma Skin Cancers. Hi, I'm Dr. Shubham Panth, an oncologist at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Today, we are going to jump right in and discuss the newest advances in the systemic treatment of advanced non-melanoma skin cancers, including cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. Please join me in welcoming my colleague, Dr. Michael Migdon, dermatological oncologist and Mohs surgeon in the departments of dermatology and head and neck surgery at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Welcome, Dr. Migdon. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Migdon, tell me, as a kind of as a first thing, what is a dermatologic oncologist? Can you explain that to us? Yes. So, as you know, uh, dermatology covers a wide range of conditions. A subset within dermatology would be cutaneous malignancies. And we have to remember that both basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma, non melanoma skin cancers, the, the most common ones, are definitely primary cancers of the skin. Sometimes people think that dermatologists are pimple poppers <laughs> and do little small <laughs> things with small skin cancers, but actually, again, this is a primary cancer of the skin, so I'm committed to treatment from those that can easily be tiny lesions that can be destroyed through those that need most surgery or excision through larger tumors that can no longer be treated by surgery or inappropriate for surgery, and that's where systemic therapy comes in. Tell me a little bit about most surgery. Whom is it used for? Or which one? Who? Which patients is it appropriate in? Yeah. So most surgery has appropriate use criteria, and this is established to make sure we're not overusing most surgery. Most of the tumors on the head and neck can qualify for Mohs surgery. Below the neck, there's more stringent criteria, including size such as two centimeter or other more aggressive features. Mohs surgery differentiates itself from standard excision in that we check 100% of the margin, so the true contact area between the specimen removed and the patient, and we map this out. Also, the surgeon is the pathologist acting on the case, so we actually read the slides, and based on our colors, marked on the tissue that we see in the microscope. We go back and use those same colors on the map to mark out where the tumor is, and then we keep going back to the patient to get more until all of the tumor is clear. But not only that, uh, most surgeons typically do cutaneous reconstruction. I reconstruct uh, more than 99% of all the cases that I treat, so there's uh, that aspect. And uh, you know, comparing most surgery to excision, for example, uh, again, Mohs surgery checks 100% of the margin, so we can start with a very small margin because we're checking thoroughly. Excision checks less than 1% of the true margin with the patient, so it has to have a bigger surrounding margin of normal skin in order to uh, compensate for that. So Mohs surgery is much more uh, complicated, uh, has a lot more input from the surgeon. So you're a dermatological oncologist, pathologist, plastic surgeonist? Uh, we're dermatoplastic reconstructive surgeons, wow. so that's quite a different uh, thing. So there are things we don't do, like large free flaps, but in terms of, you know, the uh, standard linear repairs and other flaps and grafts that are appropriate to do under local anesthesia, we do those. Yeah, so tell me, how, how common is this? What is the incidence of basal cell cancer, cutaneous uh, squamous cell cancer of the skin? Right. So. Uh, due to the lack of these cancers in uh, SEER and other registries, the exact number of these are estimates. So it's estimated around 5 million cases per year of uh, basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. The estimates show that the ratios used to be uh, about 20% squamous cell and 80% basal cell carcinoma, and currently recent uh, in-depth analysis shows that it's approaching one-to-one -one because the population is aging and squamous cell occurs more in older population. And it, if that trend continues, there's a possibility that squamous cell could outnumber basal cell in the future. But right now, close to one-to-one. -to -one. So we're talking about estimates for squamous cell, one to two million cases per year, probably closer to two. And then basal cell, two million cases, but some people think it's more like uh, four million cases. Wow. So tell me, what are the key factors which differentiate these two cancers, squamous cell from basal cell? Right. And one of you said is advancing age, they're more prevalent with squamous cell. What are the other key factors which separate these two cancers out? Yeah, so uh, they're both typically mostly ultraviolet induced cancers. Uh, that's how the, they're joined by common thread. The squamous cell carcinoma, as we said, is older population, but also other things like immunosuppression. Immunosuppression preferentially increases the risk for squamous cell over basal cell carcinoma. 
these two cancer types look different. They appear differently. Uh, so basal cell carcinoma tends to be a somewhat translucent uh, papillonodule. Uh, it can look otherwise like a scar. But squamous cell carcinoma and the precursors to that are more scaly and crusty, typically, than basal cell carcinoma. Of course, there's some crossover between these two appearances. And in fact, some tumors are basal cell that have squamous differentiation, and there are some squamous cell carcinomas <laughs> that have basal A differentiation. So it can get complicated. Uh, tell yes. me, how many are, are like early resectable, and how many are locally advanced, which cannot be resected by, let's say, most surgery? And again, the exact numbers are uh, difficult to determine because of lack of inclusion in registries. Nobody really knows how many, say, ex advanced squamous cell carcinomas that there are. Nobody knows how many squamous cell carcinomas are locally advanced. We do know uh, estimates of uh, death from squamous cell carcinoma, and they range, one source says, between four and almost 9,000 deaths per year, and then Skin Cancer Foundation quotes 15,000 deaths per year from squamous cell carcinoma, and of course those would be the advanced type that would include both locally advanced and metastatic. Okay. So tell me, what are, uh, what are some of the risk factors? You mentioned ultraviolet light. Are there any other risk factors for squamous cell or uh, basal cell carcinoma? Yeah, so the typical ones are the ultraviolet induced. We talked about the role of immunosuppression, say solid organ transplant or other reasons for immunosuppression. That would increase the risk. Uh, there are uh, genetic syndromes that it can increase the risk of non melanoma skin cancers. One particular uh, condition for basal carcinoma is Gorlin syndrome or basal cell nevus syndrome, where these patients, due to a, a genetic aberration, can form hundreds and sometimes thousands of basal cell carcinomas. So, very, very challenging to treat.